Hi, this is Tim, uh, G4WIM here. The purpose of this video is to give an update on my Yesu Rotor Controller project, which is going to be published in Radcom uh, in the January edition. Uh, since I did the original design uh, some time back now, I've been working to improve it and I've made a number of significant changes and improvements to the design. The uh, original project used a Mega uh, Arduino 2560, which worked quite nicely, but it did have some limitations. I've now changed the design and it uses a STM32 nuclear board, like this little white one here, and it attaches to one circuit board on, on the back there. And then on the front, it has the display mounted on and all the controls and stuff so it makes uh, for a very neat completely assembled unit um, the thing about the Arduino board was it was quite good but it was a touch on the expensive side for what it did now we've moved over to one of these boards uh, STM32 Nucleo this is a 32-bit a th a processor running at 84 megahertz so it's much more powerful than the Arduino board which means we can do more stuff with it and on top of that this board is about half the price less than half the price of the 2560 Arduino board so it's a win-win and that's what we're now using on this controller and it means we can do quite a few uh, nice things with it um, for instance in the past to change the azimuth heading we would tweak this knob here and the green and the green pointer would, would move but now we can just touch the screen and it jumps across there so we've got the touch screen working this also now uses um, PWM drive for the actual motor which means it does a controlled acceleration deacceleration so I just send the rotator down to this point here if you look in the top corner it'll say ready when I press it, it'll, sh it'll show what it's going to do, um, speed up and slow down. I'll just try zooming in a little bit more on, on the display there, so you can see better what's going on. And that should hopefully be a little bit better. So I've just set the azimuth to there, I'm going to press the button. And speeding up, it says, in the top right corner, doing auto, so it's reached its sort of normal speed, and then it'll do... Um, slowing down so it does a controlled acceleration deacceleration between two points we've also got a whole bunch of menus now um, by pressing those two buttons and this brings up all the parameter settings we can toggle north south stop from the uh, menu here or we can select set the uh, voltage minimum a voltage maximum for the, for the motor and we can also change the uh, acceleration and deacceleration voltage step size, i.e. how quickly it ramps up and wraps down. We can also select the slow zone, uh, as I call it, how close it needs to be to its destination before it starts to slow down. And we can also change the increments, the timing, how quickly it ramps up and down. So it gives you complete control over how fast it goes between two points. We also can add in uh, option number seven here, azimuth offset. We can tweak that to uh, compensate if the beam isn't quite aligned with, what, with where it should be. We've got a programmable screensaver as well, which you can put some text on there as you like. And you can also change the screen uh, resolution from um, 0.1 degree up to 5 degrees. And we can do that because the STM32 has a 12-bit A to D d2a rather than just a, a a normal 10 bit and if we go to option 10 here that brings up some other um, items so i just click that to option 10 at the top press the button and now it comes in, in, into this window sort of menu where we can adjust the the number of degrees um, of rotation on the rotator we can do an automatic calibration or we can load the defaults or we can force the data as good or we can display the current and as a call data so I'll, I'll just do number five here like that and this is telling me what the calibration data looks like at the moment 
Um, we set it for 450 degrees of um, rotation and we get a count of 8.144 uh, counts per degree. So very fine resolution there and it's counterclockwise to exit from that screen. We've also got touchscreen calibration. I'll just uh, display the current touchscreen which is uh, number 8 on here. Like that. And that's telling me uh, what the current touchscreen calibration looks like. So quite a lot of extra code. The code is uh, 147 kilobytes long to do all this and that's partly because there's also an added function which I haven't mentioned yet which is completely new uh, to this device. So there we have it in um, rotator control mode. I'll just tweak this camera a little, little bit here. But now if I press and hold that one and then that one and, and, and then let go it switches mode completely and it's now in Doppler radio uh, excuse me Doppler radio direction finding mode so it'll actually do DF as well so if I press the clockwise button to start at the moment um, you can see there it's showing azimuth amplitude and quality and that's because it's listening on um, 145.5 megahertz there and there's a signal and it's using an external Doppler type antenna array which uh, electrically rotates to generate the actual Doppler signal and the Doppler signal sounds like this Okay, the little pauses are where it goes away to compute the heading. And down the bottom here, we've got a, a bunch of choices. Bandwidth in hertz, so we're using a, a 5 hertz bandwidth sort of filter. It's using a Gertzil filter, as it's called. And we've set the Doppler frequency to 500 hertz and we've calibrated it to zero because there's no actual off offset there and there's also antenna test so if I just press the antenna test button it brings up a whole bunch of options here which uh, allows you to um, change the phase of the receiver if needs be or you can select uh, and test each antenna in turn by turning it up there so that's Zero means all antennas are off. That's antenna one, antenna two, antenna three, antenna four. And it switches them in turn to simulate a, a rotating antenna. Um, press counterclockwise to save and exit. Exiting, and then we're back to um, normal DF mode now. Uh, so that's uh, DF mode, and we can do two things now. We can either exit and go back to normal rotator mode by pressing um, counterclockwise or if I press the uh, azimuth that will exit from RDF mode but then set the beam heading to whatever the uh, DF was uh, showing there so I'll just do that and you'll see it drop out of uh, um, direction finding mode switch into controller mode I'll, I'll, I'll set the azimuth to this uh, sort of value here and the rotator will rotate to it. And there, there it did. Oh, <laughs> that didn't quite work right. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just do that again. All right, clockwise. There's the heading. And we'll press it again, and uh, and off it goes. So that was a very minor bug. It was because the the azimuth was already at its target value from sort of last time, so I had to just move it off where it was before, and it'll just uh, slow down onto that. And that's it. So that's back into normal rotator control mode, and we've still got all the usual push button presets along the. Um, along the bottom here and the LED lights up if the rotator is in overlap or underlap mode. 
So that's uh, that, that's about it. Um, j j just a recap: to get the radio direction finding bit working, you need an FM receiver, external FM receiver, which provides an audio signal, and you also need um, a small antenna array, typically for vertical dipoles, a quarter wavelength for part of each one, and uh, this little antenna switch unit at the top which I'm currently designing a circuit board. Okay, um, that's how it all works. Like I say, the design will be in Radcom in a month or two. I, I do have circuit boards available. And if anybody has any trouble programming up the, uh, the board, uh, I, I can probably do that as well. Uh, all the details of the bill of materials and firmware and other constructional notes will be available on the web uh, but the main guts of the design will be published in Radcom. Okay, thank you. Bye for now.